mute your microphone for you to share. You can also use the chat feature at any time or submit a question using the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen. So, all right, thank you. And let's get over to the introductions. We have um, Kevin Teeter here from the Beaverton Downtown Association. Do we have any other guests? No? All right. Are there any, if there are any visitors that would like to have uh, a say, please let me know in the chat. Otherwise, we're going to move to what's happening in downtown, the update from Kevin Teeter. You have until 6.50, so please take it away. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Ellen. I might not need that long, um, so if we have some time, I welcome comments or questions afterwards. Um, I don't, oh, there's a share screen button. So I'll share my screen in just a minute. My name is Kevin Teeter. I am the executive director of the Beaverton Downtown Association. And we are a... Um, am I, yep, okay. We have about 50 volunteers who are community members or business owners, downtown property owners, just various members of the community. And I wanna start off by saying why I believe this downtown work is so important. So when I think about downtowns, I think about the top issues of our generation. I mean, it's super hot. We know climate change is a very, very pressing uh, challenge that we're facing. We know people's public he mental health and physical health is super important. And a lot of this can be addressed, at least in part, by having a healthy downtown community. If people can drive less and walk more, if people can be, live closer together and experience a more creative environment together, if people can have closer access to their goods and their services and their homes, we can have a more equitable and, and more environmentally friendly way of life. Um, here's just some pretty pictures of what's going on in downtown right now or over the past year. You'll see that top photo of the outdoor dining area on First Street. It's been an awesome addition for if you wanna go hang out with some people and do it safely. If you wanna be out there when it's a little cooler, there are some heaters. Actually, the heaters might be gone now, but now there are some misters. So it'll be a little bit more comfortable. But basically we've got a, we've got a really beautiful and a really great downtown community already. Our organization just wants to help it move along in a direction that is very intentional with the way things are done so that businesses and people who have been here a really long time can find their home and can stay and can be really proud of the place that they're in. But then also so that new people as they're moving in to either their new apartments or new homes or new businesses, when they open up shop, they'll feel like it's their home too. So there are about 250 businesses in downtown. We have this map on our website you can interact with it and toggle things on and off. I think it's really fun, but it shows where a bunch of different restaurants are. And we got a whole bunch of barber shops and salons, uh, but you can, you can cruise around on this. The updated version also has bike racks on there now so you can find out where to park. Um, there is a, a decent variety of businesses here. You'll see people will take a lot of care into their craft. The bottom right picture I really love. It's the new owners of Yada Thai Cuisine. They opened up during the pandemic. They're on Broadway Street. We stopped in there once and we asked them, hey, why are you doing this? Why did you open up shop during the, during the pandemic? And they opened up the menu and they turned to the picture of their daughter and they said, we do it for her. Like all of this is for her. And that's similar passion, similar reasons for why everybody is, is doing, is, is pursuing their passion and their and their dream of the business that they're running. Um, it's obviously been very hard over the past over the past year, but I love this top picture because it shows like these are places where people in Beaverton can can build community, can experience their friendships, and and can really grow to love their home. And that's at the core of what we're really trying to do. So why are we here? We want a vibrant downtown community. Uh, we want to promote its historic preservation. And we also want to partner that with a focus on economic development and a building out of the social environment, which is often done through events and community gathering. So we'll run through 
a, a few different segments of our organization. And as I do this, we'll touch on how each of these are involved with what's coming next for downtown. So the first team that we have is our design committee. This is the one that focuses on historic preservation. It focuses on public art, uh, sustainability, ways that we can move through downtown and safety. Like how safe are the walking paths? Are the paths lit well at night? Do they feel comfortable so that people, if they have to park further away from a business, it's okay to walk even at nighttime. Um, a couple of the projects that that team's working on right now is getting more bike racks in downtown. Um, we've got a page on our website. It's under the visit tab if you go there and it's called biking. And we're currently looking for sponsors and donors who can help fund some, some really great bike corrals and individual bike racks. I've had some businesses reach out to me recently and say, hey, Kevin, like, I would love some more bike racks because you'll go to these places and you'll often see bikes tied up to street poles or signposts. And I mean, it, it's okay temporarily, but we'd love to help people have options. Uh, so bike racks are one thing. We also are doing some public art projects. We're trying to, we're trying to see if we can get one focused on um, promotion of environmental so like working with reclaimed materials found at the coast and having it be an educational opportunity too. Uh, but we're still kind of in the planning, page, uh, planning phase of that. You'll see the Nakwan building here at first in Watson. It was in pretty rough shape a couple years ago. Greenery growing out of the side, the roof leaked. It had six wonderful businesses in there and it was barely a functional building. But being a nonprofit, uh, we've got the luxury and the opportunity to apply for a rather large historic preservation grants, which we were able to do through the state of Oregon here. And those renovations are almost done, but it's new facade, new signage, new roof, new paint, new lighting. It's already made it mile, made miles of a difference. Um, we're still waking, waiting on a final, some final touches of new windows. It'll be more transparent so you can see in and out a little bit better. Um, but this is the sort of like major investment project that we can take on in addition to doing the smaller things like bike racks or chalk or murals and things like that. Here are a couple of photos of some of the public art things that we've done over the past year. Um, chalk, we'll talk about chalk in a minute. It's temporary, but it's also fun. We got a new volunteer there in the orange shirt, just somebody was passing by on the street and she's like, oh yeah, I would love to help with this. And then, oh yeah, I would love to help you out with your DEI planning. Um, and then Hampton here on the right, he's a Dominican muralist and um, did not speak English very much at all. But we were able to reach out to him and, and help him through the artist application process and the mural permitting and get some art that reflects various cultures in downtown because that's something we've heard a lot about people wanting just so that people feel seen and they feel like when they walk around, they'll see their culture represented. So that's design. That focuses on beautification and all of that. Economic vitality is, is different. So this is the business focus. This is the one that makes sure that we have a healthy environment for people to either start a business or grow their business or change direction if needed. Um, you'll see on the right, this is the ribbon cutting for milk and tea a couple of years ago. I love this photo. Stacy on the left there is now a board member of ours, which I'm super excited about. And I've also included it because we are starting to plan events again. We took the last year plus off of events just because it was so unpredictable and crazy and didn't want to get anybody sick. But we are planning a bubble tea themed event um, around Labor Day weekend. So that's only a couple months away. So we're gonna be putting it together pretty quick, but keep your eyes out for that. I'll share more information when it's ready. And then the left picture, looks like just your generic garage and it kind of is but there's a deeper story to it this is on main avenue near third street and cashmere beauty lounge came to us and she says kevin i've got this i've got this garage space and i don't want it to be an underused garage anymore i want it to be a space for a an artist or a micro business or an entrepreneur to be able to call home so we've been working on ways where we can activate some of these underused spaces, whether they're garages or sheds in people's backyards or 
along the sidewalks, like how can we open up more vacant space? Because it's pretty tight to get in. It's a tight to get into. Um, a couple other events that are coming up are the La Strada Chalk Art event here on the left and the Beaverton Night Market on the right. Both of these events are actually merged together this year on August 13th and 14th, and they'll both be happening right near the post office. Um, they'll both be much smaller in scale this year, but it'll be really interesting to see how they play together. And if you haven't seen the art that these people can do, like they're nationally recognized artists and they use chalk to make these 3D photos. And it's just really stunning their talent. Um, so again, events are starting to work their way back in um, as people get more and more comfortable coming out. Um, so definitely be on the lookout for, for those sorts of programs. Also, we did do Beaverton Restaurant Week last, last year. So that was the end of September. It'll be the last week of September again. I don't remember those exact dates off the top of my head, but it's not what you see here on this flyer on the left. Um, but that's just a promotion where we say, hey, we've got some great restaurants in downtown. Come to these any of these 45 rest restaurants and try out the special menu item that they're creating for this, for this week. Because uh, these people are very creative. They got some delicious food and drinks and we want to show it off. So we'll do that again, again, last week of September, first week of October. And then the right here is a photo from our Booverton trick or treat a couple years ago. And I love this one because it's the AMP appliance store employees and they're dressed like appliances. We are exploring how we can do some sort of Halloween themed promotion. We're still not sure what that'll look like, look like yet. I know that some businesses are really interested. Um, but there's still some details around what feels safe for people and what is safe, but we will be doing some sort of Halloween promotion. Um, and then you might have seen our passports, passport booklets that we did over the past couple of years. Um, it's kind of like the McMinniman style passport where you go places and you get your stamp. It encourages people to discover some new businesses in downtown. We're going to do that again. We're going to do a virtual style. So people can either download it onto their phone or computer or they can go visit a website and sign in. Um, there's some technology out there that lets you do that, but we're just now planning that. That'll likely be end of November, so that it catches the holiday season. So lots of new uh, business-focused changes coming too. So I know Megan Bronson, I think Megan Bronson came and did a, a presentation for you all with business updates. It's been pretty amazing that places have still been coming in even during the pandemic. And it's been really encouraging to see as well. Um, I'll skip over that a little bit since you've gotten that fairly recently. So our promotions team, this is our storytelling team. This is social media, websites, newsletters. Uh, they're the ones who say, hey, these are the new businesses coming in, come see them. We've got an email newsletter and I would love to get any of you signed up if you want it. Just, uh, you can either message me in the chat or email me afterwards, or you can go to our website on our homepage and sign up for the newsletter. We send up, out about one each month to the community about things that are happening in downtown, just so you can know what's going on and how you can be plugged in or how you can give your input. And then lastly here, it's our organization team. This is really the foundation of the organization. Um, it's the one that focuses on volunteer management and fundraising and policy development and making sure that we've got a really healthy base for us to do the work that we really wanna do. So I've included this logo here on the right. This is called the Raise Up Downtown Beaverton program. It's not live yet. It's going live in about a week. And it'll be a, a way for community members to be able to give to the BDA to, to support public facing programs, such as events, public art, design improvements that help make it more walkable or more bikeable, or opportunities to help businesses innovate, like welcoming in a micro business into a portion of their building, things like that. Or if they wanna be more sustainable, but they need a little boost or a little grant, like we could funnel some funding that way. Uh, but this is meant to be small scale donations, 10, 15, $25 a month. We're super excited about it because right now all of our funding either comes from grants from the city, grants from other funders, sponsorships, um, 
or a very, very small amount from donations. And then when we have events, we can make some event revenue as well. So we're just trying to diversify our funding base so that we can keep growing and do what we want to do. So when it's all working together, which it's been phenomenal to see and, and to experience the growth in downtown and in the organization over the past year, there's some really great stuff to celebrate. I love the middle photo just because it's a kid at the outdoor dining commons, just having a good time. If you go there now, you'll see some green turf and some kids toys and things like that. Um, but there's been a lot of a lot of good happening. And I think it's important that we recognize that. And even though people feel disconnected and tired and hot and worn out, that there's still so much good that's happened even over the past year. Um, and it's because we've got really great teams of volunteers. It's because we've got businesses who are passionate about the community that they're in. And we've got some really good property owners and nearby residents who are invested too. And that's how it's gonna work best. So I wanna end it here. And if there is any time, I welcome any additional comments. I'll stop sharing my screen. Um, we got, it looks like we got a few minutes. So if anybody's got any comments on anything they've seen or want to see in downtown, um, feel free to share them or just anything else. Thank you so much, Kevin. That was exactly what we needed tonight. Uh, Frosty, have a question. You have, you're up first, and then I have Bridget. Go ahead, Frosty. Yes, Kevin. Uh, a, a comment and then a, a question. Um, my wife and I are in our 70s, and, and walking is getting harder from all of our orthopedic surgeries and stuff. Uh, we would love to come to more uh, facilities down in downtown Beaverton, but we're going to be going to where, well, we'll definitely not be going to Portland, but we'll be going to uh, neighboring communities where there's easy parking and stuff. And hopefully that'll be factored in us uh, in, in these plans. And then a question, um, do you survey the people that are, the businesses that are moving into Beaverton and is the horrible business climate and the mess that Portland's become a factor of the people moving here? Yeah, that's a great point and then a great question. So first about your parking comment, uh, the city is going to start enforcing uh, the parking limits very soon. So that'll help get cars off the street that are sitting there for days on end um, and help with some turnover so that people can find parking mm -hmm. a little more easily. That'll happen this summer. Um, and then to your second question, I do believe we are benefiting from Portland's uh, unfortunate position these days. I think people see what's happening in Beaverton and they've seen other Portland based businesses move here and have a lot of great success. And they say, you know what? It's, it just looks a lot easier out there. Yeah, the tax um, plan is horrible there too. So yeah, so I, we are benefiting some from Portland's um, pain. Good. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. All right, go ahead, Bridget. Great. It was really great. It's beautiful to see all that <laughs> development. It's <laughs> great. This really makes me happy. And um, a little bit like Frosty, maybe, um, the, the public transportation. <laughs> Any plans? <laughs> Any plans uh, there? Like, I mean, uh, is there maybe if somebody can come by Frosty's house and pick him up or something? <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, you know, that kind of um, community driven, um, maybe uh, coming out. And uh, I mean, it could be uh, um, something else like uh, public transportation that could be uh, maybe. Or, or shuttles uh, in the downtown area. Shuttles, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what, yeah, shuttles or something. Yeah. Um, is there any any idea maybe? <laughs> or maybe this is something to think about. Yeah, well, I think it is something to think about. Um, it does come up occasionally, um, especially like talking about the Beaverton Loop project, which is the street infrastructure project for Watson and Hall the city's been working on. Um, just looking at how do we move people through and in downtown if they are in a car, if they're not in a car, how do we make it really efficient and safe? Um, I've heard several people mention a, a shuttle in the past, and that's definitely something that comes up a lot more when there's an event going on. Um, I know the night market has done that sort of thing in the past. Um, 
Yeah. So I think it's something that we've got to keep on thinking about. And if it's something you want, uh, tell your elected officials, keep bringing it up in this committee, because uh, that's how things get some momentum. Yeah, wait till the research center opens up and people will be going to dinner and uh, an event. Yeah, that could make a big difference, could provide some good opportunities there. Huge. Yeah. Good point, Frosty. Uh, we have a comment from Sharon, quote unquote, collaborative parking program using lots after business hours. Oh. Has that come up at all? Do you have a comment? Yeah, yeah, I do. So we, before the pandemic started, we were focusing really hard on trying to push for property owners who have parking lots, but are have businesses that are closed after five or six or four to open them up for public use. And that was just so hard to get any sort of momentum about, momentum for places were really concerned about liability. Like if somebody trips and falls in their parking lot or crashes their car, um, Columbia Bank has shared their parking lot as, had, as has Dulce Durham on First Street. So there have been a couple of businesses that have taken, out, taken us up on that. Uh, but I think if we wanna see more, uh, we'll have to get some support somehow from the city or other partners to help incentivize people to do that, like some of the larger banks. Okay, Kevin, how would you, well, what's the best way to approach that? Um, I would say if you've got, well, you can share them with me and I can always pass them along to elected officials, but you can, feel free to email your, your city councilors. Um, they do check their emails. Uh, but I'll put my email here in the chat too. Thank you. And um, the website so we can sign up for your newsletter. Oh, good one. Yeah, I'll put that in the chat too. Thanks. All right. Any other questions for Kevin? Comments? Anything else for Kevin? This is Thank not, you so uh, much. Oh, oh, sorry. sorry. This ahead, is not, not really a, a question, more of a comment just on, on with respect to the parking. We had the uh, Molly Rabinowitz, who's the city parking manager, came and talked to us at your last week, and we had some of the same questions, issues, and uh, they are going to work on better signage for some of the city lots, but something that she suggested, which I think is a great idea for, for people who don't mind and are, are, are able to walk a little further, if you can park in like the, li the lot by the library, which is open, uh, then you can really help out other people who, who maybe it isn't as convenient for. So just something to think about when you're going downtown. Yeah. That's a good point, Eric. Um, I often bike downtown myself, but when I drive down with my partner, I tell her, just plan on parking on third or fourth street and it'll be much easier. Um, so so how does liability work if I park in the library parking lot? If you're talking oh. about liability that businesses are worried about, if I park in the library parking lot or the farmer's market parking lot and walk to downtown to eat and my car gets broken into, Who's liable for that? Oh, well, those are city okay, owned. We lots. might have to table this. We might have to table this conversation. That's an uh, excellent point, Deborah, that can apply to all sorts of uh, situations. So, do you have a quick answer, Kevin, or do we need to bring you back later? Yeah. So, those, those lots are city owned lots. So, it's a little bit different. I don't know who would be liable for that, but the city provides it as a public service, public good. Okay, so we're gonna, we'll, we'll dig in. We'll find out the answer to that question, Deborah. Um, thank you, Kevin. Any other last questions or comments? His email is in the chat. His website is in the chat. Um, I hope we see much more of you, Kevin. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I appreciate you all, have, you all having me. Have a good evening, everybody. I gotta go. Good night. Okay, we have the consent agenda. Does anyone have any changes, amendments, or comments about the May minutes? All right, is there a motion to approve the May minutes? Um, I, I just have one thing, and um, if April could, if the consent agenda April minutes could be spelled correctly, um, and I will abstain from the vote since I wasn't there. Okay, right, thank you for that. We can make that grammatical correction. Uh, Eric, did you have a comment? Uh, I was going to make a motion to approve the minutes with Sharon's correction. Second. Thank you, Eric. And Eric, all those approve the main minutes with 
grammatical corrections, please raise your hand, wave at me. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. The, the motion passes. Okay. Is Allison available? Is she here or is she still having communications trouble? I have been um, working. Bergen? I did unmute. I just want to mention to Allison because we, we are talking via cell phone. Can you, I did um, unmute you at my end, Allison. It isn't allowing me you to promote you to, to to panelists, which is unusual. So I'm not sure why, but I did uh, allow you to to speak with the permissions at this end. Okay. While we wait for that, Birgit, did you have a question or a comment? No, that was just for the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, so Lanny, should we move on or should we wait? Let's let's move on to the bylaws and let me um, see if I can call her and see if we can figure it out one other way. So give us a few minutes behind the scene. Thank you. Okay, we'll just push her down one agenda item. And Eric Schmidt, thank you so much for the call today and for taking points on the BCCI bylaws refresh and vote. So please. Uh, you have until 7.20 or thereabouts because we had to rearrange the agenda, but uh, please let us know what the, what have you been working on and what have you come up with? Well, I'm not the only one who's been working on this. I've been joined in this uh, effort by Jim Percy and Bintu Fode and Mr. Joe Walicki. And what we did is we had a meeting. Ellen, I believe you were at the first meeting as well. And we went over the old bylaws, the bylaws that needed to be revised according to the city attorney. And we decided that one of us would draft a new set of bylaws and guess who got elected to do that. So I did and I sent out the draft and my colleagues on this committee all looked it over and they liked what they saw. So we submitted it to Lanny and the neighborhood office uh, was the neighborhood office then. I'm not quite sure what it's called today. But she took it to the city attorney and Grace Wong, who is an assistant city attorney, uh, spent some time with it and she reformatted it to some degree. She added a few things. She deleted a couple of things, but basically she left the substance of what we as a committee had put together. So those of you who have seen the latest draft, um, bylaws of the Beaverton Committee for Community Involvement ratified by city council on, and then there's a blank. And this has to be done by us tonight. We have to agree to send these ratifications, these, uh, these revisions on the bylaws to the city attorney's office uh, this week so that they can formalize it, format it properly, legally, and then take it to city council and city council has to act on it sometime in July or early August. So that's the timeline. Now, what did we do? Well, we added a little bit more to the purpose of the BCCI. We made the, the, the mission of BCCI a little stronger in terms of how BCCI deals with NACs and the support that it gives to NACs and by in turn by the NACs supporting BCCI and its mission as well. We added a few more duties, but they were basically just kind of fundamentally paperwork um, duties except for the last one, which was number 12, and that's to make recommendations on legislation and ballot measures relating to land use um, or public participation in land use decisions. That paragraph was in the old, parts of that paragraph were in the old bylaws, but basically this provision now, section 12 of article three, makes it very clear that BCCI is not going to endorse any candidates, political candidates or any offices under any circumstances. And we're probably not ever going to get involved in any quasi judicial land use applications, but we will weigh in with recommendations as we gather them from various sources on various land use recommendations and other issues facing the city of Beaverton. Uh, we modified the membership um, section, article four, just ever so slightly 
basically we put the NACs at the, the NAC representatives at the top of the list rather than the at-large members. We modified the attendance uh, recommendation under the old bylaws. If you missed three meetings in a row, I think you got the hook. Now we've got it uh, set up so that uh, if you miss 50% of the meetings in a calendar year, you get the hook. We straightened up the vacancy process a little bit. We had to add the removal process and the alternates process, but that was basically a bookkeeping uh, movement. Now, moving down, we did change the election of the officers. Under Article 5, Section 4, and we said that the BCCI shall elect officers annually. Uh, nominations that come from, shall come from BCCI members, they'll be elected in the order of chair, vice chair, recorder, and treasurer. And then we set forth a tie vote uh, process. And we also said that the officers will serve one year terms and those terms will start in January, beginning January 1st. So that we've cleared up a little bit of confusion there about when officers actually start to serve. We also added a provision, section seven, um, that we've sort of informally had over the last year and a half, two years under Ellen's leadership and, and give her credit for this because she's responsible for a leadership committee where she put together the, herself, the vice chair, Joe, uh, the treasurer, Eric, and the recorder, Jonathan. And she invited a couple of old folks, old past chairs like me, to participate in kind of an informal leadership uh, committee where we would give her advice and talk to her about what we wanted to see BCCI doing. And we would also work through some of the nuances about some of the events that we were planning and how we would get that all done. And it became kind of a critical line of communication when we all had to do it this way through the box. So this basically puts that into writing and we've expanded the leadership committee to include not only the officers and the past chairs, if there are any left, but also the subcommittee chairs. And speaking of subcommittees, we've made it very clear in these new bylaws that we can have more subcommittees. We can have as many subcommittees as we feel we can we can handle, but they but it has to be approved by a three quarters vote of BCCI, and we have to have uh, the uh, committee chairs have to to meet certain criteria like being members of BCCI. We also added uh, we provided for special meetings. You know, every now and then we got to meet specially. I don't know why, but we do. And then we put together all of the other stuff on agendas and uh, how the meetings are conducted. We set forth a staff and council liaison, and we put the authority in section nine, article nine. And if the draft that you're looking at says that there are two article nines, I've already changed that to send it back to grace. So article 10 would be how we would amend these bylaws going forward. Um, my suggestion, ladies and gentlemen, my fellow members of the Beaverton Committee for Community Involvement is that we put a lot of time and effort into this. The city attorney's office has put a lot of time and effort into it. What it does is it basically formats the, new, the BCCI bylaws to meet the formats of other boards and commissions in the city of Beaverton. And it also strengthens a lot of the purpose that we have, the leadership committee that we added for more opportunity. Uh, I might add that we discovered through the course of doing this that the BCCI is the only board or commission in the city of Beaverton that has a treasurer, but we're the only board or commission in the city of Beaverton that actually still has a bank account. So we decided to leave the treasurer on the leadership committee. So uh, at some point we may not have to have a treasurer because we've got this grant committee. We've got the grant process going forward now that basically took care of a lot of the revenue responsibilities that BCCI had had in the past. So I just throw that in as kind of a sidelight. Hey, so Eric. Madam Chair, Eric? yes, sir. Uh, each NAC has a treasurer. Well, that's good. Well, yeah, you should because you, yeah. you raise money during certain yeah. events. So yeah, it's a big, big part of it. Yeah. So that was another reason why we left the treasurer and Frosty because we, it's not an anachronism. It's still a useful purpose and we still need that job done. So Madam Chair, with your permission, I would like to move that we adopt the provisional bylaws as drafted by the committee and the city attorney and send them to the city attorney's office for a final revision and have the city attorney then directed to take it to city council 
as soon as possible. I, I agree with you. Looks like we have two comments. Hopefully they won't change the substance of what we're trying to pass here. Eric with a K, do you have a further comment? Uh, more, more of a just question for clarification. Uh, that new section uh, 12, uh, where you talk about BCCI would officially uh, take a position on on ballot measures or things like that. Can, can you just elaborate would on what, not, what? Would not take a position. Would not take a position, okay. It says at the very end, BCCI shall not expend any public funds to support or oppose any ballot measure or candidate for elective office. BCCI shall not take a position for or against any quasi-judicial land use application or any political candidate. Right, but it says BCCI will take positions on legislation and ballot measures relating to land use or public uh, participation in land use. So I'm just, I'm trying to get I believe the way that we tried to craft that, Eric, is that we would not take positions. We would gather information and make recommendations for and against. We would gather all of the information that is available, pro and con, on these issues. So has there been a, a draft that came out since the last email that Lonnie sent us on the 24th? No, this is the one that Grace passed on. Okay, because in that section it says will take a position on BCCI will take positions on legislation and ballot measures re relating to land use or public participation in land use decisions only by a two thirds majority vote of BCCI taken at a meeting that conforms to the public meeting law. So yeah, we can take it, but most likely we wouldn't have two thirds of anybody in this committee that would want to agree to one of these positions unless it was a big deal. But mostly what we wanted to do was make sure that BCCI continued to be the font of information and recommendations for these issues for the NACs and for the citizens of Beaverton. Okay, so this, this, this isn't adding some new, I wasn't sure if this was a new thing that we're saying, we're, now we are going to, if we have a two thirds majority take a position, you're, you're just more explicitly saying what we wouldn't do in terms we of what- added, We added, we're not gonna support candidates. That's basically where we're coming from on this one. Okay, got it, thank you. Unless you wanna sure, support a candidate you. on your own, you're perfectly welcome to do that. And the city attorney has told us in the past and told me in particular, in past elections that if I wanted to appear in a voters forum, a voters pamphlet as a sponsor or a, a supporter of, of candidate X and have Eric Schmidt, Beaverton Committee for Community Involvement underneath my name, that, that's perfectly acceptable to do, but I cannot do it for the committee as a whole. Yeah, thank you. Land, thank you. You, you cleared that up, that, that it was in the original bylaws. So thank you, Eric. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both, Eric. Eric's actually Eric. have that as a, a note to maybe clarify as we get further closer to the voters forum, what exactly we can do as committee members and what we do as citizens of Beaverton. Okay, any other questions about that specific issue? Otherwise we'll move to Burgett. I'd just like to make okay, a ahead, comment. Burgett. Oh, <laughs> sorry, go ahead, Jim. Okay, I was gonna say we did, uh, it actually had to do with a uh, part of the development code change that went to city council here and that was a change we were making to change appeals from de novo or from on the record to de novo. We took a position on that. But we didn't want a de novo because it basically lessens citizen participation, pretty much limits who can appeal, I mean, who can join in the appeal. So that was the case where we took a position. But it, that, that's unusual. Yeah, I'm finished. That was, that was unusual, but it also fit into the overall aggregate mission of BCCI, which is to increase citizen involvement, or at the time we called it citizen involvement, now we call it community involvement. Thank you, Jim. Okay, Birgit, go ahead and then we'll move on to Allison Kipton. I have a couple of questions. So first question was, so we don't have a um, time, uh, I mean a date anymore when the officers will be um, elected. I didn't see that, which I think is not bad, but I don't know, I didn't see it. The way the way the language reads, Birgit, is that they will be elected annually and yeah. they will take office in January. So 
in my mind, annually means that we would elect them in November or December and they would take office on, on January 1st. So we are not bound anymore by this, like previously we were bound to a certain time. So that's, uh, we you could know, elect like- them, We could election. elect them in July if you wanted to do yeah, that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, good, good. But they wouldn't take office. They wouldn't take office, take office until, until January, January yeah. Well, it could be good and could be. So good, that's good. The other thing I wanted to also find out is uh, the leadership committee. Um, here, the, the uh, I have a question about um, the leadership committee or, or the chair deciding whether to communicate with the with BCCI about what, I, I mean, that might have not changed. It just came to my, uh, um, to my attention, um, the, the chair decides when to communicate with BCC, with the whole body of BCCI. Isn't that a problem? Isn't this all, um, uh, do we not have to um, be able to show this to everybody what we are talking about? Anything that that leadership committee would discuss would be taken to BCCI the way that this language is written as far as I'm concerned. Secondarily, this is purely at the discretion of whoever the current chair is. If Ellen decided tomorrow she didn't want to have a leadership committee, she wouldn't have to call one. But if she did, whatever that committee discussed would be taken to BCCI. But it says here the chair has the sole authority to decide whether to take any decisions made by the leadership committee back to the full BCCI for formal action and information as only, needed. Only if there's formal action needed, only if it's an action item. And it's the same thing. You as a BCCI member at large could get two thirds of your colleagues to get something on the agenda the way these bylaws are written now. You could put something on the agenda as well as the chair. But the way that we've set it up is that we're trying to streamline the process for the agenda so that the chair has the, basically the responsibility for putting the agendas for all of the meetings together. But if there's a consensus among BCCI and a vote is taken and two thirds approved, then we'll put it on the agenda as well. The leadership committee is basically a, an advisory committee and, and if that leadership committee advises the chair about a particular issue, then the chair really basically has a responsibility of taking it to BCCI. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. And that that's, I read that differently. So um, I see that. Okay, good. And then as a past chair, um, are you just in part of this leadership committee um, uh, at if will? You choose, if you choose to be on that committee as past chair is invited to do so. I see, okay. So, uh, we we had that before. Uh, so let, the me, past, let me add one. Let me let me add yeah. one thing to that. The way it's written is that the past chair has to still be a member of BCCI. Well, okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Good. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you. Yeah, you're good. You're gold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you both. And I'd like to say, as chair, those exec committee meetings were so helpful. If this is this is a big job and any help that, that we can get from, from you, the members, is so appreciated. That being said, we still need a chair for next year because my term will run out and there are limits. So please put that in the back of your, your head and think about it. And uh, Madam Chair, it before we go any farther, we haven't had a second to my oh, motion. Oh, that's right. We need to, and we, we need, need to have a vote so that we can get it over to, to the proper authorities at City Hall. Yeah, I'll second it. Thank you, Jim. Okay, all those in favor of approving the motion to send the bylaws to city council for approval, raise your hand. Five. Three, four. I think we have the majority. Thank you, everyone. Alan, just know I'm an alternate, so alternates don't vote. Thank you. I still think we have the majority. Lanny, do you agree? Yes, I do. Did anybody vote against it? I'm sorry, are there any votes for abstentions? No? Okay. Unanimously, Thank not you. only by majority. <laughs>
don't ever ask me to do I, that I, again. I've just asked, I've just been asked via chat, can you clone this concept of leadership committee to all of the boards and commissions? Uh, that would be <laughs> fantastic in my point of view. I think that's, that the city or a by commission uh, decision, but I'm going to um, let Lanny work on that. Thank you for bringing that up, Sharon. That's a great point. Um, and if they don't have some sort of method for this, if they have enough going on that they need an exec committee or a leadership committee, that would be a great way to do it. It has been very helpful. I really appreciate all the input we've had. And, and thank you so much, Eric. I can share that with the staff liaison so that they know that is a potential option for their boards. Okay, any other questions or comments before we? Okay, let's go to the uh, council liaison update. Allison, are you here? I, I see. I see an attendee, but I, I don't hear anything. She didn't unmute herself, Lani. What's the deal with that? Yeah, she has, and it looks good at my end. Uh, I've unmuted it from my end, and I can't promote her to panelist. Um, it's not giving me that option, uh, but she's calling on the phone. Is that why? Allison, are you there? Can she not load Zoom on her phone, Lani? I think, you know, she's been trying a couple different things, so, so I'm not okay, sure. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I think it's just a combination of a few things. It, yeah, it looks, it looks fine at this, at my end. Um, so there's nothing more I can do. Um, I hope the city would uh, provide our council members with the right type of equipment. Yeah, so she. It wasn't in the budget, Frosty. <laughs> oh, there's she, lots of stuff in the budget. She did start sharing with me a few things to mention, you know, above the the, the normal, and we can also put it an email out to all of you since it looks like this isn't going to work. Um, because I, I don't, there's nothing else I can do at my end, uh, unless Allison, if you want to try to um go get off the call and then call back in we can try that one more time there should be a phone number she could call into yeah that's what she's doing so it's it's she said that she didn't get the the notice to unmute herself and so that was like her first inkling that something's not quite right <clears throat> is that the star, okay. star nine yeah so Hey, Lanny, can she, at the very least, tell you and you tell us? So you're playing telephone? Sure. Yeah, she was, um, and she was starting to, to give me some notes to share, and then I thought I fixed it. So um, she so I can definitely do that. I, um, she was talking about the, the cooling center that uh, we had quite a few folks utilizing that, um, and they... Um, we're able to accommodate everyone, they added more chairs, et cetera. And, but just one thing to note is that people's air conditioners, if they have, if they're lucky to have one, um, they're starting to fail. And so if you can just kind of keep at, an eye out on those that, you know, might be more vulnerable, since this is pretty um, tough physically on, and you could die from this heat. Um, so she, that was definitely the one thing she was starting to share with me. And she probably was going to talk a little bit about um, the hiring of the new city manager. And um, so good news uh, starting uh, uh, August 23rd. I'm just seeing if she's messaging me. I think, I think I'll just go for it. Um, August 23rd, we will have um, an official um, full-time city manager, not an interim. And uh, her name is Jen Hariyama, and she is coming from um, city, she's a city manager from Tracy, California. 
and a little bit of background about her because she just has a wealth of uh, all sorts of local government experience. Uh, her local government leadership began in 2000 as the assistant finance director of the town of Las Gatas, California. She then transitioned to the city of Tracy, California as the administrative services director and then the interim assistant city manager. She then served as the assistant city manager of Livermore, California, and then the city manager of Scotts Valley, California. And I'm gonna put a few links. Uh, oh, there's one more caller. I'm wondering if this is, is this you, Allison? Well, okay, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm going to put the um, charter link where you can get up to um, all the current information about that, but she does start uh, the week of August 23rd, and we're just really excited, and I don't know if you all got a chance to watch the um, the, the video um, that everyone was invited to meet the finalists, the two finalists, so, um, and we keep all of our updates on the webpage that I'll enter in the chat. And so uh, the other component that might be newsworthy for you is that um, the fun summer reading program is underway at the Beaverton City Library. And this is where kids, teens and adults can earn prizes and give back to those in need. Uh, if you complete 15 hours of reading, listening to audiobooks, or being read to or doing a family activity, um, there's all sorts of um, great things you can earn uh, for, and you can also earn meals for recipients of Meals on Wheels. And I will also add the chat in the chat, the um, way that you can register for that for you and your family, or um, please share at your NAC meeting for those of you that are NAC representatives. And then lastly, uh, for fun events that are being planned all summer long, um, we're keeping the, all of those events listed uh, at BeavertonOregon.gov. Uh, forward slash events and um, as well as our library has great events as well and so there as events get scheduled and um, are finalized we will keep um, both the city's events web page updated as well as the library's events page updated and uh, just a lot of great things happening um, you know uh, so I would just check check it out often and um, I think there'll be a little bit of something for everyone. So uh, any questions about that? And I'm so sorry that I couldn't make it work for Allison, this technology stuff, but uh, we can definitely get um, any nuggets that she may have for you. I'll, I'll send that out in an email. Eric? Yeah, so if she's gonna be following up with the email, it'd be good for her to address. So I've just read in the um, Beaverton Valley Times that, they're going to be hiring a, an assistant city manager, which seems like kind of a surprise given that we're, we're hiring one before we even have the new city manager in place. So it would be interesting to hear what, what went into that decision process and, and you know, it seemed to kind of come out of nowhere. So it'd be great if to, she could add a little more insight into that. Okay, great. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions? Lenny, do you have any further city update items to add? The, the, that's it for now. And um, thanks you guys for that, for your patience. Our fun Zoom saga. <laughs> um, I have a personal question for the city, Lenny. Um, I don't have a verified source, but I heard that the Beaver to Pride celebration that happened yesterday was, was amazing and, and we participated but that there was a motion to maybe move the date and that wasn't um that wasn't being the city was not receptive to that so any information you can bring to that next month i would like to hear um these unprecedented temperatures and i think we've proven that the beaverton pride community will come out rain or shine any day of the week anytime and support the community so if there's any you know any barriers to moving that date a week later because of the unprecedented heat i'd like to know about that 
Sure, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll see what I can find out and bring those details back to, um, we aren't meeting in July, so in August. So I'll bring it back to August or put it in an email to all of you. Perfect, thank you. Uh, Karen, I see your hand. Do you have a question or comment? Yes, I, I'm very surprised about the assistant city manager thing. Who decided that? I think that might be something we have to discuss in August, unless someone has some information available. I, I mean, my understanding is it was a decision of the city council, or yeah, at least it was. If Alice, if, if Allison approved. can give us any insight on what city council was thinking, that would be great. That's that's a shocker. Yeah, you know, I might add if you watch if you watch the leadership meeting that we had the twenty fourth. We had quite a discussion of that. Not only did <laughs> changing the charter, they have an assistant manager and two new staff positions to support the mayor. And it looked like a lot more expense than we ever thought it would be. Right. And and Miles said that there's been a lot of discussion at NAC meetings on this too. So it is a sort of a, a volatile subject, right? And I think it'd be good to have somebody to explain what this is really costing the city and why. It was totally opposite of what we were promised during the election. Yes. Sounds like we have a hot topic here. Sounds like we have <laughs> a few months to gather responses and, and answer those questions. Lanny, late. looks like you're on top of it. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for that. Thank you for bringing that up. It looks like there's a lot of interest in this committee, so it's something that we definitely want to explore and then we can take back to the community. All right, any other questions about city update or council updates? Oh, so go ahead, Beatrice. I just had a quick question about um, the city of Beaverton hiring and the school Beaverton School District hiring a school resource officer consultant. Can you tell me a little more about that? Does someone have information at hand or is that something we can discuss in August? I would have to get more details uh, since I don't have that information readily available. I don't know, can, I know Councillor Tivnon is trying another um, method of trying to get on this call. She may be able to answer that, but if not, we can definitely uh, loop back in August on that topic. Thank you both so much for bringing these up. I really appreciate these topics. Uh, instead of springing them on us, please think about it, emailing myself or Lanny for agenda items because, you know, even with a week or two's notice, we might have been able to have a response for you. So now I'm, I'm just as curious as you. So thank you for bringing those up. And hopefully we'll have some answers for you at our next meeting. Anyone else? All right, we're going to move into subcommittees. The first one is the events subcommittee with Joe and uh, the, the next voters forum. So go ahead, Joe. Okay, well, <clears throat> it looks like uh, September 9th is gonna be the uh, voters forum. And uh, Eric and I talked talk today over the phone. And Eric, uh, can you uh, please, since you really understand that whole system and the, or the idea of what we're gonna do, could you please brief the committee on what we talked about? Sure. Um, Basically, folks, what we want to do is get back into City Hall for the next voters forum. And I had a conversation with Lanny today, and she's going to pursue all of the avenues that are necessary to see if we can't secure council chambers on September the 9th for the voters forum. We have one race and two candidates. So the thinking here is, is that one, TVC TV wouldn't have to bring a truck and a whole bunch of camera equipment and microphones and stuff to city hall they could just send down a couple of guys and they could work the equipment that's already there for the granicus uh, presentation two the physical setup of council chambers is such that we could have the moderator sit in the middle of the horseshoe and the candidates on either side and then we could have sharon and terry down in front with their timing cards at the speaker's table and if we really wanted to really get fancy, we could set up a separate microphone just to the side of the speaker's table 
where we could get some of our co-sponsors to come in and ask questions uh, from their perspective of the candidates. Having said all that, would we be able to have anybody in the audience? And I think the decision that Joe and I wanted to give to Lanny, and hopefully all of you will, will, uh, will go along with it, is that we would give each candidate the opportunity to invite four people to the council chambers and then have, of course, as many BCCI members who want to be there in person. But that would be the limit of how many people we would actually have in the chambers, unless everything gets lifted by September 9th and we can have a full house. So it, it all depends on how that's going to go. Uh, on the other hand, having uh, TVC TV being able to use the Granica system uh, is going to be a real blessing. We're not going to have to go through a lot of the technical hoops that we went through for the last couple of voters forums. And while I want to applaud TVC TV and all of you for your efforts in the last couple of voters forums, I think having going back to city hall is just going to be a real bonus. So uh, we're going to have to decide the events committee is going to have to decide if we want to get more sponsors and if we want to get more people mm -hmm. to come in and ask questions, um, how we want to work that all out. But we've got, we've got July and August to figure it out. So, uh, Okay, yeah, that's Start good about the thinking caps on. It's going to be an interesting race. Yeah, that's good about the sponsors. Um, I, so I certainly can go back and see if the regulars would want to co-sponsor it again. Uh, Lonnie, I got a key question though: is timing on the postcard that goes out to the. Uh, first of all, do you have money to send out a postcard to all of the uh, folks in the Everton area? You know we're. Not? Sure. Do we even great, want to do that? <laughs> great, great question. Um, we do have the boards and commissions fall recruitment postcard that does go out um, end of last week of August, right around Labor Day uh, weekend. So we were thinking about on the one side being able to at least do a promotion for the event. And it ties in nicely because it's like, here's actually an example of what a city board and commission works on. So so that's that's already in our budget. I don't have to go look for funds for that. And I mean, it ties in nicely with, you know, being an actual um, product of what you get to do if you are serving on a city board or commission. So that's what I'm recommending. Uh, and we can make that happen. And the timing, we can probably make the timing work so that it lands in mailboxes um, like that last week of August. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, so Eric and I and, and Lanny will probably be talking to one another uh, before the August meeting. Um, Eric, anything else? I don't. I think that's about it uh, for me. Or no, but I, I think the issues that were raised here tonight about the uh, school resource officer and the assistant city manager is <laughs> sure going to make the voters forum a little more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. Right. Okay, Ellen, that's, that's about it for me. Can't think of okay. anything else. Madam Chair, I was wondering if you could just do a sound check for Councillor Tivnon and see if it's working. She's now on as a panelist. Allison, are you there? I can hear her. You can hear her? I can't. It shows her phone's unmuted now on the screen. No, it shows it's still muted. Is that Ellen's phone that we're seeing? Are you oh. 7375? No, oh, maybe. You? No, oh. It's, no. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. It's, it's unmuted hello? now. Can everyone it's hear me? Muted. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. 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 Hey. Hey. We can hear you. Oh, there my we God. Go. <laughs> Oh, wow. You have no idea how frustrating it is to hear people ask questions. You're like, I want to answer it. No one can hear me. <laughs> oh, I'm... So go ahead and give us about a 10 minute update. Go ahead. And now okay, you have all these okay. questions. Okay. Okay. First, I have to defend the city. They did give me equipment. It just happens to be a faulty mic in my laptop at the moment. And so we're working on getting it figured out. And I happen to have a flip phone. I'm one of those really weird people that got rid of my smartphone and 
Um, I, so I can't load in a Zoom app. <laughs> so, <laughs> hopefully this doesn't happen often, but <clears throat> um, okay. So I have, I had six things I wanted to talk about and a city manager and the SRO program were both on there. So I'll start with those first since they've got questions. So the assistant city manager piece kind of um, surprised me as well. <clears throat> I wasn't on council when the, the charter uh, uh, changes were discussed and, and worked through and made. Um, and so I, <sighs> Some of this is it predates me. I've done my best to do my homework on all the thinking and the conversations that happened into what the intent was for this role. But I do know that coming into a new system where it hadn't been in place since I think it was 1979, the last time Beaverton had a city manager, there was going to be a lot of blind spots. And I think that as we've had city manager, our interim, Kurt Wilson, and now we have Jenny who's who's preparing to join us coming in and telling us what the job truly entails to take on the running of the city. Having an assistant city manager is important, um, not only for the day-to-day -day operations, but also in the event that anything happens to Jenny, that we, we have someone that's there. So same as having a mayor pro tem, someone who can jump in and, and help run. So I believe that is the logic that is truly driving it. And I don't think it's just, let's just add in more pork, you know, um, kind of bait and switch. I think it was simply uh, not truly understanding that it wasn't as simple as, well, you had a strong mayor who did everything. Now we're just going to have someone else who's doing exactly the same way. There's, there's a lot of differences in how a city manager form of government's run versus how it was run before. Um, and then as far as the mayor's staff, um, I think there were also a lot of blind spots on once we switched to this form, but we continued to have a full-time mayor. What was that going to look like and how do we make sure that that role is effective? And uh, I, I, I can unequivocally say that Mayor Beatty has been working morning, noon, and night, seven days a week to lobby on behalf of the city of Beaverton at the state legislature um, as well as at the federal level to position us to get as much uh, state money and ARPA funds as we can possibly get into the city. Um, and I don't know if you saw the, what happened last week with the state legislature, but uh, Beaverton was awarded the most dollars out of any city in, the, in, in Washington County. And that's directly related to the work that she's doing. And um, and it's millions and millions and millions of dollars. And in order for her to be able to do that, she had requested to have um, a couple of staff help her in that work, as well as community um, relationship building, getting out in the community, responding to resident feedback, and a whole host of other things. Um, I think that the mayor's role is amorphous. And I also think that uh, whoever decides to run for it next might not be as um, hell for leather, like motivated in the ways that Mayor Beatty is, and it, maybe they won't require the staff, but she made the case for why she needed it, and we agreed that it was a good use of the funds. And it's where they're coming from is where her salary comes from is in the council budget. That was changed in, in this new budget, so it's it's being diverted into council funds that are allocated and were voted on by the budget committee and have been reviewed by the city council as well. Those are available on the city's website. It's definitely, it, it's kind of overwhelming. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to look at the budget, um, but there's hyperlinks to every single section in there. And there's one that's for the city council and it, and it describes um, you know, the, the types of monies that are in there and what they're used for. They're for the stipends for the counselors, for the mayor's salary, for these positions. And then there's um, money for attending conferences and learning events and things like that. Uh, and, and that's kind of the long and short of it. I'm happy to answer any questions on that. There are a couple other items I wanted to touch on as well that I'm sure might spark a little interest from this group too. Okay. All right. Hearing none. Um, so the, the next thing is on ARPA. Um, so the, the latest, uh, 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 you know, Mer I think it's American Relief Program 
something. <laughs> um, at the federal level, is dispensing $61.5 billion across the country. And um, at the end of the day, it's going to shake out to be, I, I believe, at about $18 million um, for the city of Beaverton. And every city is getting money, and it's a matter of prioritizing what do you do with it. Um, there are some things that you cannot do with it. You cannot use it for PERS contributions. You cannot do it for operations and maintenance. Um, so, you know, the council's got lots of ideas on what they'd want to do with it, but we know that that is absolutely not the first step in the process. The first step is understanding what the community needs. And so we are going to be setting up a town hall to get uh, folks together to talk about this and um, would really love it if the NACs can help spread the word about that. There, a date has not been set. But the date will be set in time to truly take in the information and help it guide what what happens with those dollars. Are there any questions on that one? Is there a date that those funds have to be spent by? Um, I believe it's the end of 2022. Okay. So Are there's there a time horizon meetings? to it, but it's long. Are there going to be open uh, meetings on this? Yeah, it'll be discussed in a uh, town hall. It'll be discussed in the city council meetings, and it will also be discussed. I believe we are trying to convene a multi-city conversation. So with our neighbors like Hillsboro um, to talk about, you know, things that fall on the borderline and things that we could do together. So we're trying not to leave any stone unturned on how to truly capitalize on this in a way that does it justice because this is definitely a once in a lifetime windfall that we will likely never see again in our lifetimes. Um, it's very unprecedented. And, uh, and we were all, we're already in a really good position with the way the, the budget landed this year. Um, we have an incredible financial department and financial director and team. And we're it was so fiscally responsible and conservative with our money um, going into the pandemic that coming out the other side, we haven't had to um, furlough anyone, lay off anybody. Uh, we have pulled back on some projects, but, you know, hit, hitting like, okay, let's just quiet that one down while we do this one. But we haven't had to make any real devastating cuts um, because of the budget. And so we're already in a good position. And then on top of that, we have all of this. So, um, yeah, there, there will be some really robust conversations to make sure Allison, it's not just six Allison, people in a room talking about it. Yeah, Allison, this is Frosty Comer. Um, are you really listening to yourself? I mean, here we are getting tax money. This is people's tax money for something we didn't know we know what we need. There's no economic justification that any business would have to go through to do this. I was down in Tillamook this weekend uh, where it was a multiple sclerosis fundraising event. You couldn't find a restaurant that was open. There's businesses that have closed. People have lost their jobs, but we're able to keep the government employees and school teachers paid, but not the tax base. I mean, I'm so disgusted with what you've just said. It's just appalling that everything that, that was we've just learned today was promised that would not happen uh, when this vote was taken for this new type of government that you wouldn't be adding more people, you wouldn't be adding more expenses. And here we go again, more money for government and not enough uh, financial support or rules and regulations to grow businesses, which is your tax base. It, it's just obscene. Well, the, so the, there were no raised taxes toward yes, the there will be. that were made. How are, how are we going to pay for this windfall once in a lifetime windfall that is going to come in either higher insurance uh, higher uh, uh, rates um, mortgage rates higher rates on interest um, look what's happened to the gas prices in the last year uh, it's it, it, you know, I'm paying a dollar more per gallon of gas now uh, and I mean the ones I worry about are the people that have been laid off the businesses have closed I mean it was really sad to drive through Tillamook, which is not a robust economic town. And, you, and having grown up in rural Oregon, take a look at all the rural cities around the around the state and take a look at how many businesses are boarded up. But all of our government I, employees I, are getting paid. 
So Frosty, what is your suggestion? I mean, you know, I mean, I have some ideas that yeah, I would suggest, but what are your suggestions? Is, is not add more government expense because that's going to have to be supported by more taxes or more interest, higher interest rates. I mean, we're already starting to see inflation creep up. That doesn't hurt people that, you know, government employees, but it sure hurts people whose business has been closed. It doesn't help the homeless population. I are, mean, and Frosty, are you speaking to the ARPA funds? I'm speaking to any, you know, you, you characterize the money as a windfall. That is tax money. That's money our government has borrowed from other countries like China that we have to pay it back somehow at some point in time. There's not, I mean, if you're going to be, you know, it's just so frustrating. Okay, well, I, I, I would love to respond to it because I hear the frustration in your voice. And I, I was out well, at Lincoln why City people are moving out and I saw it as well. Into Idaho and into Utah and into Arizona because there's just this, the government is becoming incompetent in managing money and not taking care of the tax base that pays everybody's salaries. Take a look at how many businesses and look at the, we're, pay, we're paying more people more to not work now. Um, and there's millions of jobs available and you can't find, there was so many, you know, help wanted signs all along the uh, highway 101 in these small towns. And there's nobody. Okay, that's Frosty, can you hear you? Let's hear Allison's response. Think, think 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 Sorry. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done. To, at another meeting. Allison, go ahead with your response. Okay, well, my response is that the, the American Recovery Act, it is federal funds. We had no sway in uh, what Congress is going to do with it. They decided what they were going to do. Money, and I'm trying to respond to you. Please don't interrupt me. I didn't interrupt you. They decided that they were going to do this. This money is coming. So we have two choices. We can either use it or we could turn it away, which I can't even imagine what people would say if we did that. But the point of the money is recovery. The point of the money is to go to small businesses, other businesses, to help people get on their feet. It's to, it's to help uh, low-income renters trying to figure out what they're going to do when the moratoriums are lifted. It's, it's the, the money itself is truly intended to try and help us recover from everything that you're talking about. It's not going to cause us to have to raise taxes unless we were to start something brand new that was going to require infrastructure to support it over time. And I do not believe that is the plan for these funds. The plan for these funds is to distribute it to nonprofits, to get it into the hands of small businesses and to help our community. It's, it's not to go into the coffers of the city of Beaverton, and it's not to line anyone's pockets. Um, I don't want to, I'm I, I more than happy to get on the phone with you and, and talk about this or go out for coffee together um, because I, I agree with you <laughs> about government spending. Um, and I agree with you that there's a lot of really, really bad decisions that get made that people 10, 20, 30 years down the road are the ones that end up paying for. Um, but in, in, when it comes to these funds, uh, it, it's, it's not something that Beaverton had any hand in crafting the legislation around it. It's just coming at us, and we have to decide what we're going to do with it. Okay, unfortunately, okay. we're going to have to move on. Thank you, Allison. Are there okay. any other updates? Um, I, I will. Uh, uh, so for ATRAC, this one is a little bit more of a conversation. I'm happy to really dig in with, with you on this in August, if you would like. It is around the SROs. I'll give you a very brief update because there isn't a ton of activity happening on it at the moment, um, but there should be something more to report on in August. Uh, we had created a joint process with Beaverton School District. Myself and Councillor Sansusi were appointed to serve as liaisons, as well as two members from the school board. Uh, our roles are simply to help create a process for having this conversation. It is not to drive the conversation or somehow manufacture an outcome. It is, it's simply to just make sure that this is happening and in a way that is going to get us to what the ultimate goal is, which is to figure out uh, 
on uh, Beaverton School District's part what safety looks like for kids. And Beaverton, once they make their decisions on if that means having school resource safety officers or not, Beaverton then needs to decide if we are going to fund the program. Or there might be changes to it. There might be more mental health components to it or uh, other types of approaches to discipline for children that are acting out in school or um, doing, doing things that would otherwise prompt someone to pick up the phone and call the police. We are really trying to look at this extremely carefully because whatever decision we make is going to have intense impacts um, in one way or another. And uh, where we're at right now is we know we cannot do this with two governing bodies and no one in the room to help facilitate it. We are going to be going out for a third party facilitator. The cost is going to be 60% uh, the Beaverton School District, 40% the city of Beaverton. And that consultant, once they are under contract, will lead extremely robust from, uh, this is written into the RFP that is currently being um, vetted and edited until it's both the governing bodies are, are satisfied with it to have community input that is uh, a lot of voices being in, invited and also approached to give their feedback on what their personal experiences are with um, SROs, their viewpoints on it, how their communities are impacted. Um, that includes people in the community, includes teachers union, it includes um, advocacy organizations, it includes students, it includes the SROs, everyone who has any sort of peripheral or direct um, uh, relation to this is going to be a part of that process. Um, but really, it's we have to know what Beaverton School District wants to do before we make our decision. That's what we decided as a council. Um, where we're at right now is the RFP is being drafted. The uh, goal is that it is put out um, by the end of summer. We get somebody under contract, conversations and community outreach starts in the fall but this is going to be a long timeline. We will likely not be in a position to vote on this until this time next year. It's looking like a year timeline. Um, and again, if anyone wants to talk to me about that, give me your, your input on it, um, your ideas, your concerns. I'm more than happy to do that. I know time is fleeting tonight. Um, and uh, so the, uh, there's also the permanent shelter. <laughs> which is another topic that I'm sure everyone is going to want to weigh in on and hear more about. Uh, we have not um, done a feasibility study on site. That is going to be happening. It's still in very, very early conversations on what this would look like. There are um, dollars from the state level that would help um, start this up, and it would be a place for um, a permanent year-round shelter. Um, that is very, very early on in the process, but I want to flag it for you because it's coming um, to council to really start talking about this and the and city staff are, are working on it seriously because uh, the, the, perm the severe weather shelter, um, if, if Project C goes forward, um, we're going to lose it and we have to have, we have got to have a plan in place. For that and there has been a lot of different plans for the city to community vision plan the DEI plan um, there's there's several different um, at points in history where it's been talked about the fact that Beaverton does not have any sort of homeless shelter and they need and we need one um, and the conversation has been pushed to the forefront because of the decisions around the community center and I know I've fielded feedback from this group about the community center and objections to that project, and I completely hear you. Um, and frankly, I have shared some of those concerns as well. Um, this is not a completely done deal, and the um, staff knows how I feel about it, and I'm not um, uh, anticipating um, that going forward without a lot of, a lot of questions around it. So it's a very tangled up issue in my head, and I know it might be for you as well. And again, please contact me for coffee, a phone call. The last thing I'll say is, yes, the cooling center, it, it had space for 100 people. More than 100 people showed up. People are, are in desperate need right now of relief. Um, and it will stay open until temperatures drop below 95. 
a lot of our apartment dwellers right now cannot get the inside of their apartments below 85 degrees, even with their ACs blowing full blast. So um, just know there's there's a lot of folks out there suffering. If you know anyone that you think needs to get checked on, check on them. Um, and if you hear of anything, power outages or anything else, please let the city know so we can jump on it. Um, and then the last thing is 4th of July is coming up really fast and it's dry and it's hot and it's going to probably still be pretty hot when that happens. Um, I'm going to be talking to the other counselors and the mayor about what we can do to, to really try and encourage people to be as responsible as they possibly can because we do allow fireworks in Beaverton and we um, want to make sure that that does not turn into a problem. Um, so we'll be reaching out to um, Tualatin Valley firefighters uh, as well to see if there's some educational stuff we can do and also just step up some um, vigilance around this topic. So, um, sorry, I know it was a lot and it's slow and we're not even meeting <laughs> next week, but um, th thank you everybody. And Frosty, thank you for speaking your heart. I hear you. Um, and, and I would love to talk to you more. About I'll send you an email. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Allison, thank you so much. If, um, we'll put your contact information in the chat. What's okay. Um, yeah. Um, did you do something really quickly? Yes, I did. Um, in terms of the fire, Alison mentioned something very important and something that I guess is bothering all of us with the uh, 4th of July coming up. I have seen a lot of places, um, boots opening up to sell fireworks. And Alison talked about how, you know, they're going to be going around to talk to people about being responsible. I thought, I don't know what the city can do. Can, is there any way we can have information or just you know, for those people who are selling these fireworks, right, to give out when you're selling it, you know, it's like, you know, just say, you know, something, if it's a leaflet or just, I don't know, I don't know what I'm thinking of, but just, I just think people need to understand, they don't, you know, when they go buy it, they just, um, you know, they, they're not thinking about a, what, what's going to happen long term, right, or, you know, if you, if it's so dry, it's going to, you know, it's going to, we're going to, you're going to cause fire for someone and for your neighbors, so just something to, for, to hold people accountable, for people to know when they're buying these fireworks, I think will be really useful, I don't know if the city can do that with places where they're selling these at. I know that it's being discussed. I had a conversation with the city manager about it. Unfortunately, this, at the state level, um, they don't they don't go off of heat. They go off of drought when they're making um, public service announcements about fire safety. And uh, Beaverton doesn't fit that criteria. And so we're as a local municipality, we would have to make the decision to do something really robust and get the word out. I think that the next would be really, really good for this next door and, you know, uh, utilizing online as much as possible, as far as having statements go out, the timing, it is so soon. Um, and I, I mean, having this heat wave happen so close to it doesn't leave a whole lot of response time. So I think that's where we really want to partner with a TBF and R to, to see what we can do because they bear old old hats at, at getting out fire safety literature. So I, I am looking into it um, mm. and I, I'll give an update to the group on what I find out on what it is that we can do. And the city can do like Facebook, that email when they're sending out, you know, the weekly emails out as well. They can put that into it because I know we're saying we're not a drought place, but look at what we're experiencing this week, this week, right? Yep. This week, like yeah. Oregon is changing, Beaverton is changing. And, you know, we have to be considering this, it, you know, global warming is real and it's getting really serious. Cities that yeah, like us I will never agree. hit 113. Now we're here. So we need to like, see how they can get us involved in that. Thank you so much, Alison. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, looks like Lanny is taking up the charge and it's going to include it in the Friday NAC email update. So then it's on all of us to tell everyone this is we TV, know. This is TBF and R's latest mailer and they've got a big thing in here about fire season. If you haven't read it, you should. Thank you. Yeah, unprecedented temperatures, unprecedented times. So everyone, everyone know your neighbors, your NAC, next door, Everyone, you know, please pass the word, and Lanny will be sending out talking points. Do you have anything to add, Lanny? I was just going to say it's 
um, great for you to, the, the items are from TVFNR. And so is, you can straight post it onto Nextdoor. So Frosty, I know you're so good about doing that on the South side. So I'll put that in the email to you tonight. And if you can just get that out to your channels, that would be great. And we'll also have it in our Friday NAC update. Okay, we're going to move on. Allison, thank you so much for coming. Despite the technical difficulties, we really appreciate you. And yeah, um, we so hear you in that, we, that you're asking for feedback and for contact. So everybody, her, her email address is in the chat. So please use that because that, that's what it's for. That's what she's for. So thank you. Okay, now we, let's go back to our subcommittees. Let's go to land use. Terry, do you have an update for us? Yes, I do. Um, we met before the meeting tonight, and um, I was thinking it was going to be our last meeting, but we still have a few loose ends. And our um, what we what we're debating now is um, the contents of the, of this kind of um, comment letter, kind of a deconstruction of a comment letter that could help all NACs. Um, when they are faced with a, a situation where they want to respond to development, how they could craft a letter that has all of the primary contact, uh, con content that would be uh, considered an effective letter for um, staff to review and, and, of course, applicants to review. And um, so that's that's one loose end that we're trying to work on, and I, we want to get that right because that was one of the primary uh, goals of this whole website um, enhancement project was to come up with some good comment letters. So if anybody out there knows of one that either you've crafted or your knack sent or you just know of it, uh, please forward it to me, and um, we'd love to be able to deconstruct it and use it for um, uh, a NAC leader who's uh, searching for, for these kinds of resources. So that's um, a loose end that we hope to tie up here in the next few days or weeks anyway. And then we uh, just uh, individually, I'll mention Kanet and specifically, and Miles have um, interacted, interfaced with our um, planning uh, staff and kind of, um, you know, asking them for their best ideas, again, to help us communicate, you know, what are the kind of questions they get? What are some of the, uh, the, the uh, problems that NACs uh, experience when they're reviewing or preparing comment letters? And we're getting that input from a staff level. And I think that's, a, again, an, um, we've, we've got it from a lot of our NAC members, we've gotten it from our committee here, and now we're getting it from staff to make sure that we've kind of uh, covered all of our bases and in, in getting the right information on there. And I believe that it's it's in a position where we're probably 90% there, 95% there to go live. So I think it's um, maybe over this break, we'll, uh, after that, we'll be able to show off what we've been doing, what we've been working on all this time. So. Any questions or any additions from any of com committee members? Connect. I, I just wanted to say, um, well, first, thanks, uh, thanks to the Land Use Committee, Terry and, and um, Jim and um, Eric. You, you look like you're muted again, Kenneth. We can't hear you. Sorry, I thought it was off. I, I, had, I need to double tap that. <laughs> anyway, thank you um, for the work group, uh, the traffic calming work group that, um, that has been uh, working since March. We're going to speak on, uh, well, we spoke on June 3rd and presented our um, findings and summaries of um, the NAC feedback and uh, data. And um, I'm happy to say that the Traffic Commission is, uh, has said that they will devote their July meeting, which is the first of this, this week, on 
looking at the voting process and um, for the traffic calming um, project process. So um, thank you all. There are there were some other comments and some other traffic concerns that uh, I'll, we can. I'm hoping that we'll also have a chance to address at that meeting. So thank you. Okay, any questions or comments about land use or traffic calming? All right, looks like Terry put something in the chat. Uh, comment letters about land use goes to her email. Thank you for that. Anything else? All right, let's go to Frosty for matching grants. We have one update for you. Hey, we had one grant uh, submitted, and I'll, brief, I'll read the brief description of it. It's uh, Mask Alfresco present, presents the Looking Glass Alice in Wonderland, a compilation of Lewis Carroll's beloved books performing a comedy del arte uh, style of slapstick antics, color, colorful Victorian costumes, British folk tunes infused with contemporary social and political jokes. This is a free family friendly play uh, performing on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays from August 13th through August 22nd and um, uh, at uh, seven o'clock. So it's about a 90, uh, yeah, about a 90 minute, uh, no, 80, 70 minute presentation. And uh, uh, Birgit, thanks for your comments because I also concurred uh, you shouldn't get, um, paid to write the grants uh, if you are counting them as volunteer uh, hours. But uh, with that, uh, Lonnie made sure that that would be corrected if it wasn't already. And we basically approved it. It's something that has been done in the past and it takes place out on the, uh, by the library area. And the only concern, I guess the only one concern I have when I was looking at their budget, <clears throat> they're looking at, uh, passing the hat donations of uh, $1,400. And in the past, um, I think Lonnie or Miles had indicated there was maybe 50 people uh, uh, signed up. So if you had 100 people, uh, that's $14 a person. That's uh, quite, a, quite a, a lot of expectations for donations, but um, they do have uh, some other grants that they get from Washington County and Clackamas County as well from parts of the arts thing. And I think this would be a good way to get us back to some semblance of normality, getting people together. Uh, there will be, I'm sure, some uh, concerns with COVID, which uh, uh, the governor, as of Friday, I got a message from Oregon State University Athletic Department that starting um, this Wednesday, um, all sporting events will be able to have 100% uh, participation of fans, uh, and that's really big news for your uh, college football programs that rely about 70 to 70% 70 of their budget comes from uh, football, and that, that goes to all um, Title 11 sports as well. So I think that if anybody is concerned about COVID, then they can choose to come or not come, or mask or not mask, uh, depending on their vaccination status. So uh, we, we approved this. Um, uh, and hopefully it'll be a good good event and people will want to uh, get out of their houses and hopefully August should be much cooler than it is today and have a great time. Rusty, where, where'd you say this was going to take place? Let me confirm that. Um, in the library. Yeah, in the library. Yeah, uh, project location, Beaverton Library Lawn, which uh, was overpowered by the... Uh, I, Frosty, I had one question. Um, yeah. Central Beaverton is supposedly um, uh, supporting this. I didn't see anybody on there from Central Beaverton. Um, uh, no, I didn't either. But uh, according to um, Miles, this came from their NAC. So in addition to the people that drafted it. so. Okay, so we are giving them two thousand dollars. Yeah, that. we recommend we recommend that it be approved. Yes. 
And having come back to the I, I missed the meeting, just so everybody knows. I missed yeah. the meeting. I was just not there. Well, and I sent my com comments in. <laughs> so yeah. they, they're great. My, my, my team is really great. But I just you did a great them. job getting your comments to us, and they, they, we are, they were greatly appreciated. Uh, seeing the thousands and thousands of cars lined up on Highway 6 from Banks to Tillamook this weekend, uh, I, I was just blown away by people diving into the uh, uh, river and uh, there was hunt thousands of people on the beaches. So I think people are gonna really be looking forward to getting uh, somewhat semblance of normality and attending something like this. Oh, you know, Shakespeare uh, and the yeah. park is out again already. <laughs> now, this Just is a, saying, in case yeah. somebody wants to go. They did, they did make sure that this was not Shakespeare or this is not Ashland. Uh, uh, this is uh, Lewis Carroll's um, Alice in Wonderland. So, but I'm sure it'll have a lot of uh, a, a semblance of that with the uh, uh, British uh, New England costumes and stuff. So, so we're recommending right. it be approved. How, thank, how you. thank you for that. Question question. The public. Sorry, mm -hmm. so so was the Karen or, or Bintu? Oh, that was Bintu. I was just asking Frosty today, India. Um, in the funding request, do they uh, uh, say how are they going to advertise it to the public? Different, uh, been to different kinds of uh, possibilities. Uh, they had said um, Facebook, they have their own website. They also are using um, Washington County and uh, uh, I think it's also going through the Art Commission. I, uh, where's Shannon? She, yeah, actually, it's I can read Sharon, it. Sharon, right sorry, I'm saying that. Yeah, Bridget and I can read it right here. It says Andy Mesa Webmaster uh, Fee Website uh, Maintenance. So they'll have their own website, displays and ad in Washington County, Summer Arts Guide, printed flyers, handbills, programs, scripts, surveys, from, forms, and uh, on. Uh, uh, so they will definitely be, um, I'm sure this will also get into next door through the city of Beaverton's uh, stuff. I mean, obviously, when I, when I get on, uh, the city of Beaverton weekly update. I put those on next door as well. And uh, I'm sure it'll be on the city of Beaverton's website too. Lanny, are they able to put a banner at the library like some of the other events? I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I'll have to check. Well, they're gonna need to probably uh, partition off part of that uh, area for view viewing. So there should be some signage I would guess. And setting up their stage and yeah, this would be like prior to the to the event as drive by you see it it's a promotional just yeah. like our volunteer fair and other things too but that's that's a city sponsored thing this is a city supported thing in so far as matching funds so yeah. and it does cost to make those banners okay that's we can part, that's that comment part, that's, part of the that's part of okay. the Looks like they do already have a marketing budget. We will afford that um, specific comment to Miles. Thank you for that. Their, their and thank you for seven thousand one hundred and thirty-five dollars, uh, and their funding, uh, to their funding total, uh, counting our two thousand dollars, seventy-seven hundred and fifty-three dollars and seventy cents. So they uh, they have that covered. I think even with uh, if their uh, passing the hat doesn't hit fourteen hundred dollars. They should have it covered. It sounds like they're using multiple sources of funding. Correct. So, from other grants too. All right. That they use, uh, they do these shows other places too. All right. I love the fact that we're trying to get back to normal, and also that you acknowledge that the guidelines could very well change between now and then. Uh, Connect. Did you have a question or a comment? Oh, you're still muted, love. Okay, real quick comment, um, just part of the traffic calming stuff. If if in your neighborhoods you are, um, are having hot spots of traffic problems in your neighborhood, not an entire street, but say a blind corner or a school area, and you could let um, let me know, uh, talk with your NAC, let me know, and then also um, whether there are any neighborhood associations that are worried about the traffic around their schools. Those two questions would be terrific. 
Excellent. Thank you for the request for feedback. All right. Are there any other subcommittee questions or comments? Okay. Now we're a little bit behind, but it's it's all good. It's all important. I think all the, everything we've done tonight is is excellent. So we're going to move on to NAC updates and round robin. If you do have a like a concern or news about your NAC, go ahead and use your raise your hand feature, and we'll we'll focus on you. Is there any news that in the NACs going on that we need to know about? Any successes? Any questions? Challenges? Okay. Just wanted to make that space available. Um, our next meeting will be two months from now, so maybe we'll have some more to share there. Okay, now I'll move it over to Sharon. Do you have some actionable items for us? I cannot even read my writing on this whole thing. It is a mess. So I'm probably going to be fired after this. So um, bear with me. So Kevin um, gave us our, his contact information. Please go check out the website. Um, the four teams that exist within the BDA, um, I'm actually on two of them. Sign up for the newsletter. The events that he um, alluded to include La Strada and the Night Market, which is August 13th and 14th, Beaverton Restaurant Week, which is in the fall, September, October, Booverton. The Passport will be virtual this uh, year in the end of November. The Raise Up Funding through the organization um, subcommittee um, is uh, something to look into. Parking issues did come up, so email the city council and um, express those in that manner. Um, now, this is where I get a little bit um, kind of interwoven between uh, city council and city. Um, about the city manager, Pride Date Changes, SRO Consult, um allison came on and oh actually there was a cooling center city managers coming on board 823 and a reading program and that was proxied by lanny as she gave that report when allison came on board um, she gave information and rationale that she provided um, about the assistant city manager the mayor's staff um, arpa the 18 million dollars for beaverton which basically is a relief program. So community needs, it's going to result in a town hall, city council meetings, multi-city um, discussion, uh, going to the NAC and those funds will end around 2022, the end of 2022. And they are for the purposes of things such as small businesses, nonprofits, uh, rent um, forgiveness, those kinds of things. Okay, that's three, four is the SRO. Um, Beaverton School District and City Council are in discussion. City percent goes to uh, Beaverton School District, and the City Council has 40% of that F R R R F P. Excuse me. Um, with the eye towards safety for kids and community input, um, and that will be, I guess, a year from now. And please email Allison with any thoughts about that. Uh, permanent shelter is being looked at cooling center for anything less than 95 degrees is being discussed fireworks um, and that is through nax next door tbf and r i have a question about the um, washington state of washington and those types of um, high performance fireworks i'm a little concerned about that um, and then uh, where do i go next uh, subcommittees. Okay, so events. Joe talked about the one race and two candidates for hopefully a live um, September 9th voters forum in city council chambers with a question about how many attendees and the postcard will go out as a joint operation between uh, the voters forum and the um, solicitation for boards and commissions. Land use subcommittee. Um, the website enhancements and comment, comment letters. Um, email any suggestions to Terry. We're about 90% done on that. Traffic calming, voting process to be reviewed, hotspots, email connect about that. Matching funds for Lewis Carroll at the library on August 13th through the 22nd. Um, that was a $2,000 grant. And uh, yeah, I think that is it, except for the fact that we don't meet in July and we will have our next meeting in August. And I, I wanna say one thing, that our MYAB 
uh, Sophia Slack had been on the um, Beaverton Downtown Association and was Volunteer of the Year. I just wanted to put that out there as a former BCCI member. So that is it. Thank you. Eric, do you have a question, comment? Actually, I just wanted to say that if you really want to cause a stir, walk into new seasons with your vaccination card hanging around your neck. You'll get to meet a lot of people that way. Good to know. I'll do it. Did you, laminate, it. Yours? Did you laminate yours and put bling on it? <laughs> no bling, but I got it laminated. You okay. Um, Any other questions or comments about meeting? I have a comment. I just, want to thank, I just want to thank Eric with a K on the article. I just ran and got my paper and looked at it. And I suggest that you all read it. There's lots of money things in there that are really interesting. And what article is that specifically? It's a Beaverton to hire assistant city manager. I'm sure it's online. I'm a paper person myself. So. It's in the Valley Times. Valley, Valley Times. Time. Right. Yeah, sorry thank about you. that. Yes, very interesting. Thank you. This is what it's all about. Any other questions or comments before we close the meeting tonight? Uh, well, thank yeah, you for I, being here. Whoops. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, I just got one thing. It's strictly, um, if you were to go on the uh, website for the Beaverton, city of Beaverton, uh, you would see uh, choice of government, com communities, service, departments, and what uh, and what else I can do. And if you hit community, then you would get the neighborhood NACs. And if you look through all the NACs, it was really good. It seems to me that on that particular area, we should have BCCI. Now I know BCCI is on another part of that website, but why couldn't BCCI be on with the NACs as a subtitle on the bottom saying, hey, well, by the way, BCCI is helping to coordinate a lot of these things. Just thought. Okay, a little bit of website feedback. Lanny, gonna, gonna take plus, care of it. Plus communities in our name. Uh, we have BCCI under the, the, where the boards and commissions are. You know, everything kind of falls where it, uh, where it's housed under, and under city charter and whatnot. And so, um, but thanks for that feedback. We'll take a look and see if, if there's a way to, to include it. A hyperlink might do. Yeah. yeah. We love hyperlinks. Because we're the umbrella for the NACs. And so right. there's and that two way crosswalking of communication. And given our new bylaws, we are really functioning as support for the NACs. Right. We belong there too. Yeah, good one. That's why I brought it up. All right. Mm -hmm. Strong opinions there. Thank you. All right. Thanks for hanging out, doing a little late with us. I think we got a lot done this month. Uh, next meeting is August 23rd. So I will see you there. Have a safe, healthy, happy summer. And meeting is closed. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay cool. Bye, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Care. Happy fall. Happy fall. Stay summer. cool. <laughs> <laughs>